Has this story reached you, Bell? You're always kind of a, dare I say, you're a, a weather bell for me with regard to when these stories break through. Sometimes I'm a little close to the forest to be able to see the trees. Has this story broke? It's okay if it hasn't. But that's the whole point. Riley Strain, does that name mean anything to you? No. Have you heard the story about the young man that went missing from Luke Bryan's bar? Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. I know exactly who you're talking about. Okay, yeah. that's who I'm talking about. Yeah. So, if you're unfamiliar with the story, obviously we've got a lot of college-age students that come into Nashville to party, and a lot of them go down to Lower Broadway, and a lot of them get as drunk as Cooter Brown and, you know, unable to find their butts from a hole, from a hole in the ground if they had a compass and a flashlight, and somehow they make their way back to their hotels or whatever. The overwhelming majority of them do. Yes. So I want to relate this story to you and tell me, Bell, I think you're a you're a good ballast on this story because E came at me on this and she said, why aren't you talking about the responsibility that the bar has? And I said, what? What do you mean? Here's the story. So. On March 8th. Riley Strain was visiting Nashville with a group of his fraternity brothers from the University of Missouri. At about 10 o'clock on that Friday night, Riley Strain was inebriated enough that it was noticed by the Luke Bryan bar staff that they that he was drunk and they declined to continue to serve him. Now, I would note that it is a part of Tennessee law. The Alcohol Beverage and Control Board dictates that when bars recognize that you are already visibly and noticeably intoxicated, that they are no longer allowed to serve you alcoholic beverages. That's a part of the law. Or then they become liable for what happens. Correct. So the Luke Bryan Broadway bar did what they were supposed to do, and they said, we can't serve you, you need to leave. And they kicked him out of the bar. At around 10 o'clock on Friday night. I don't know if he was aware where his fraternity brothers were at the time. We don't know a lot about this story, and I've not had the gaps filled in for me. But for whatever reason, his fraternity bros did not help him home. The, the story as I read it was that they had become separated in the bar. They had seen each other across, but they were not like in a group together. So maybe, and I'm trying to play this out in my head, like, you know, we've been downtown together, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, and it gets crazy down there. Mm -hmm. And so if if someone at a bar would were to tell me, hey, man, I, we think you're overserved. Maybe you need to take it on home. If I'm there with a group of people, I guess maybe he wasn't in his right. He was too drunk. Because I, my natural inclination would be, that's fine. Can I go tell my guys that you're making me leave? I don't know where they are. They're on the third floor. I mean, that doesn't sound unreasonable at all. And I would think that Luke Bryan Bar, the bar would allow him to do that if he was there with other people. I would suspect, pure speculation on my part, he didn't try to do that. Because if you look at some of the video, I mean, this guy is obviously blitzed out of his mind. Well, I think when he was talking to the uh, ABC officer, the guy pushed him down. Oh, I'm sorry. That's a different story. <laughs> That's a different story. <laughs> so the Tennessee Alcohol Beverage and, and, and the Tennessee Alcohol and Beverage Commission has now launched a probe into Luke Bryan's downtown bar. Before we get into the probe, the question that my wife asked me, and I think it's a reasonable position, and I think it's a good conversation point to have. She said, "Well, if the bar knows that he's drunk." And they're kicking him out. Do they not have a responsibility to notify the police? If, in other words, if he's too drunk to be in a bar, isn't he too drunk to be on the sidewalk? Are you asking that ethically or legally? Both. Okay. I don't believe legally they are required to do that. My position on it is legally the bar is under no requirement to report that. And the bar is probably trying to do the kid a favor in as much as if he does encounter the police, he's probably going to end up. Yeah, he's going to get arrested. Arrested for public drunkenness. 
So they're probably trying to help him out. And the last thing the bar would consider is that he would go missing. Now, for those that don't know the end of the story, he left the bar. He walked across Broadway. He went down Church. He got. He he went over to Church Street. He cut down Church Street for a while, and then eventually ended up. Was it First Avenue? He was right along the river. Yeah. Um, and he disappeared, and no one has seen him since. The rampant speculation is that he somehow fell in the river, the Cumberland. Yeah. And that he's just not been found yet. You know, I guess we could hold on or cling to some hope. I mean, it. I don't know. I don't. I don't want to speculate any further as to what happened to him. It's sad one way or the other because some nothing good has happened to him. Something bad yeah, has happened. They, to him. And I read in the story that when they tried to call him, it was just immediately going to voicemail as if the phone was turned off, which is what would happen if it. The water, if it got waterlogged. Right. So one way or the other, the search for Riley Strain continues. What is the responsibility of the bar here is the question. So legally, I don't know that the bar has any responsibility outside of, hey, you can't be here anymore. This is a grown man. I mean, I understand a young man, but he's 22 years old. So we we have some level. And and what, what I was talking to Erica about this morning was, well, Are we going to demand of every bar on lower Broadway that any time they have to tell a drunk that they can't be served anymore and they need to leave, that that bar then needs to report that individual to the police or get him home safely? Because I don't know that we want that necessarily because I think that's going to change the dynamics of downtown quite considerably. Secondarily, and what what Erica said at the time was, well, do they not have a drunk tank or something in and around downtown where they can perhaps not arrest people but manage them? And I don't know that that's the police's responsibility either. I mean, I understand that there's concern about this young man. The, I mean, from yes, an emotional not standpoint, exactly Mayberry, you know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, from an yeah, this isn't Otis, and it's not Mayberry. There's way too many people down there pounding them back in order to. Uh, in order to individually take care of each one of them and make sure that everybody's okay. I don't know that that's the right answer. I understand the concerns and the questions about what the responsibilities of the bar would be. But here's the interesting aspect of this. Just this morning it was announced by the Tennessee ABC board that they are looking into Luke Bryan's downtown bar as to whether or not they overserved a strain before kicking him out. TABC Director of Legislation, Policy, and Communication, Aaron Rummage, told the Tennessean in a statement that the investigation would determine if any violation occurred. Rummage declined to provide any additional details about what led to the investigation. TC Restaurant Group, owner and operator of Brian uh, Brian's Bar, it's the Luke's 32 Bridge is what it's called, said that they are working with the Metro Nashville Police Department to provide security camera footage and that they are doing everything in their power to help facilitate a safe return and praying for a safe return for Riley Strain. Crews have already searched the riverbank to try to determine if Strain had washed ashore or if he had fallen near the river after a surveillance video showed him stumbling along Nashville streets. Strain was last seen on video surveillance at 952 near Gay and First Avenue. Do you know if there is a legal standard as to what overserved means? Because, you know, different people are going to get drunk at different points due to, you know, body mass and, you know, height and con- physical yeah. condition. Right. So you can't, you can't cap it at a number of drinks. Right. Because some people can consume larger amounts of alcohol, like you said. Because of their body mass, or some people are more susceptible to the effects of alcohol than others. So some people would get, you know. Yeah, my question is: Does Luke does Luke's bar have a yardstick they're able to use to comply with that law? I think it's all speculative. Yeah, exactly. I, I think it's all observational. It's all about the barkeep observing the actions of the individual across from them, and if they appear visibly drunk, then they're not going to serve you. 
I and mean, if they appear visibly drunk at that point, are we going to call that having been overserved? I mean, I remember. I mean, and and the, these are rules that have been put in place to prevent individuals that are already drunk from getting drunker and to try to save people from themselves. I don't know that we can go any further than this. I remember uh, an incident in my life several years ago where I accidentally spilled. I was making a Bloody Mary to take to the golf course, and I spilled some vodka on my shirt. I had a Bloody Mary at the golf course. I left the golf course later on, it, like early afternoon, like 1 o'clock. I had one Bloody Mary. I, was, I had not drank anything else. I went into um, a ABC store. This was in Alabama. And I was attempting to buy some alcohol for an event that we were having later on that night. And the guy behind the counter said, sir, I can't, I can't sell you alcohol. I said, what do you mean? He said, I smell it on you. And I, I said, oh, I spilled that earlier today. I was making a I told him the story. He goes, it doesn't matter. If I smell alcohol on you, I'm not allowed to sell. I said, I'm not drunk at all. He goes, I, I don't doubt that, but I'm not allowed. So, you know, certain states have certain cut and dry rules right. that they give as guidelines to the individuals that are selling alcohol to the general public. I don't. I don't see anything else that the Luke Bryan. I mean, Luke Bryan's bar kicked him out. So on the, on the one hand, it's like, don't they have a responsibility above and beyond kicking him out to make sure that he's safe? On the other hand, the reason that they kicked him out, the reason that they stopped serving him, were the rules set forth by the ABC board. I'm not saying those rules are bad things, but at, least at what point? At what point is it no longer their responsibility, or at what point uh, do you just blame them entirely? At what point does it have to? And that's exactly right. And for me, it all goes back to the individual. We need to gravitate toward individual freedom comes with individual responsibility. If you're going to have the freedom to get drunk as Cooter Brown, sad as it is, you have the responsibility to make sure that you can get home safely and without putting other people in danger. 1253, Super Talk 99.7, WTN.